everyone, welcome back to One Cent Sports Cards YouTube channel. I am back with another set review, and this time it is for 2022 Top Series 2. This is the second entry into the 2022 Tops flagship set, and it's getting very little love for a lot of different reasons. But is it really that bad? We got to ask ourselves, who are we chasing? What are the best break teams? Well, there's only one way to find out, and that is with One Cent Sports Cards. 2022 Top Series 2 Set Guide and Review. So the second set of the flagship series for Tops in 2022 drops this Friday. It is Top Series 2. And what we're trying to do in this set guide and review is find out how good or how bad 2022 Top Series 2 really is. We're going to do that by using the exclusive one cent sensational set rating. Here's what we'll cover off on today. We're going to start with the set highlights, kind of go over what the set really has to offer. Then we'll cover off on the different buying formats, dig a little bit deeper, tell you what the key cards we're going to be chasing are, cover off on all the parallels, inserts, relics, and autos. And then I'm even going to give you six teams that I think you should target in in breaks. If you want to know how good all the 30 teams are in breaks, I'm going to give you a break cheat sheet as well, which will tell you how good every team is. And that's what brings us to the one cent sensational set ranking where we find out how good 2022 Top Series 2 is. And we'll end it by telling you where it ranks within all of the other sets that have been released so far in the 2022 baseball card collecting season. But before we begin, I have one more thing. Be sure to throw over to first, hit that like button. It's the best way you can support the channel. If you like these set guides and review, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you want to see them first, you got to hit that bell notification. Finally, if you have not checked out my Patreon page, I invite you to do so. There is a link in the description below. That's how you get into my breaks. That's how you get access to the Discord community. That's how you get break credits. That's how you get retail restock links and so much more. Be sure to check it out. So here we go. 2022 Tops Series 2. Here's the set highlights. First thing to know, it's the second release of the 2022 Tops flagship set. This year, we've got a 330 card checklist. The number starts at 331 as it is an addition to Top Series 1. It is in its 71st year of production, started way back in 1951 and hasn't stopped since. This year, we also get a 16 color parallel rainbow, but you might find a few more out in retail formats like Meyer. You might find the purple and stuff like that. And it is going to be available in hobby and retail stores. This stuff is going to be everywhere. The 1987 design carries over from Top Series 1. It is used heavily in inserts and autos throughout Top Series 2 as well. And we have three new insert sets. Generation Now, Sweet Shades, and No Hit Club. Generation Now has kind of been used in the past, but it is new for Top Series 2. Image variations are also going to be available once again, and I'm really interested to see what some of those names are. I'll tell you why in a few minutes. This also has the second series of the Salute to Mix, so this will be cards number four, five, and six. It is a super rare chase card that you can find in top series two, saluting, of course, Mickey Mantle. Silver packs are going to be available again in hobby and jumbo formats. And in the jumbo format, we also have a box topper. This time it is the 1987 oversized all-star cards. There are 10 different auto sets and six different auto relic sets found in the set. And finally, if you like relics, we've got four different relic sets also available. So what are the different buying formats? We'll start off with hobby and we start with the jumbo box. That's gonna have 10 packs per box, 46 cards per pack. So you get 460 total cards. Those are going for around 260. I think maybe it's dropped to 250 now, but your cost per card going to be hovering around 47 cents, which are guaranteed to get one auto, two relics, two silver packs, five gold foil parallels, which are exclusive to the jumbo format, and one of those 1987 Tops All Star box loaders. You can also get a hobby box that's going to have 24 packs per box, 14 cards per pack. 
336 total cards going for about 124 bucks online right now so your cost per card drops down to 37 cents and you're guaranteed to get one auto or relic not and relic but or you do get one silver pack and you get guaranteed two rainbow foil parallels for retail we have a retail box Again, that's going to have 24 packs per box, 16 cards per pack, 384 total cards. Cost on that, $85. Cost per card comes all the way down to $0.22. Cents. No guaranteed auto, but you are guaranteed to get 24 stars of MLB cards. Those are exclusive to the retail format, land one per pack. You can also get a blaster box. It's going to have seven packs per box, 14 cards per pack, 98 total cards. And the current cost on that is going to be $25. Cost per card creeps up to 26 cents, but you do get the one commemorative batting helmet relic, which is guaranteed. There's also the hanger box, 67 cards in the box, $15 for a current price. So cost per card comes all the way down to 16 cents and you're guaranteed to get four inserts. You can also get a fat pack, 36 cards per pack, and they're going for around seven bucks. So your cost per card creeps up to 17 cents, but you do get two retail inserts. And finally, individual gravity feed packs are also going to be available. And don't be surprised if you see some blister packs, maybe some tins out at some of these retail locations. They've done that in the past, and they might do it again here in Top Series 2 this year. So what are the key cards we're chasing? Well, we're going to start with our rookies, which is the big thing that everyone's talking about. More important is the rookies that aren't on here. But we'll cover off on who is in here first. We have Seth Beer, Jake McCarthy, Wander Franco gets a second rookie card. We have Joe Ryan, Shane Baz, Josh Lowe, Colton Welker, Juan Yepes, Spencer Strider, O'Neill Cruz, Roancy Contreras, Matt Brash, and Jose Siri. Now, a lot of names missing in here that people thought should be in here. Think Jeremy Pena, Bobby Witt Jr., Julio Rodriguez, Spencer Torkelson, the list kind of goes on. And for that, it's been getting a lot of flack because some of those names probably should have been in here. But we'll cover off on more of that here in a little bit because some of those names actually are in here and I have a sneaking suspicion they might even be in some of these base set. So listen up, pay attention. But before we do that, the parallels, autos, relics, inserts that we're going to be chasing, obviously any of the parallel rookie cards are going to be pretty sought after. The image variation cards, always popular, and that's where I think the image variations could get really interesting. If you go back to 2018 Top Series 2, Ronald Acuna Jr. wasn't in that set, but he did have an image variation, which became known as the infamous Bat Down Rookie Card, which is a very valuable card. Might we see Bobby Witt Jr. or Julio Rodriguez in some of those image variations? Well, that's to be determined. Tops has been quiet about it, but don't be surprised if you see some of those cards show up as image variations. Plus, they also have autos. We also have the 1987 Tops All-Star inserts, the relics, the autos. You can kind of see what that looks like over there on the right. The Generation Now die cuts and autos. And we have the silver pack refractors and autos. We got the baseball star autos and dual autos. And there's plenty of awesome cut signatures. Those are all going to be one of ones. Awesome if you can hit one. Sketch cards also available. Those are one of ones. Those are only available in hobby and jumbo. And my favorite relic or auto relic that you can pull out of a baseball card set. Tops reverence patch autos also available in this set. We have the Major League Materials, Relics, and Autos, and we have those oversized 1987 All-Star box loaders, and you can get auto variations of that as well. So what are the base parallels we're chasing? Well, we've got kind of the standard one that we saw in Top Series 1, and that continues in Top Series 2. So we've got Rainbow Foil, we've got those Gold Foils, which land 1 and 2 packs and Jumbo boxes only, Royal Blue, which land 1 in 10 packs. Those are in retail only. Then we get to our numbered ones. We've got Gold to 2022, the Green Foil Board to 499, Orange to 299, the Red to 199, the Vintage Stock to 99, the Independence Day to 76. Then we have the Black numbered to 71. That's going to be available in Hobby and Jumbo only. 
Then we get the Father's Day and Mother's Days to 50. The Memorial Day, that's a camo number to 25. The clear variations are back. They're each numbered to 10, but keep in mind, only available in Hobby and not the full set is available. Only 100 cards out of the base set are available. Then we have our printing plates and our platinum, which are both one of ones. So now that we know our parallels, what are the inserts? We'll get started with the 1987 Topps All-Star Baseball insert. 50 cards in that subset. And we have the parallel breakdown of blue, black, gold, red, platinum one of one, and a very cool wood one of one. We have the 1987 Topps Baseball. That's a carry-on from Top Series 1. An additional 50 cards in that set. And we have the same parallel breakdown that the All-Star ones have. We also have the 1987 Topps Chrome Silver Pack cards. Those are the ones that are available in Hobby and Jumbo. 100 cards in the set. There will be parallels. They have not been announced what they are, but expect to see a full rainbow of refractor mojo goodness. We also have the base card image variations. Now, those cards are to be determined, and I think that these are going to be the key to Top Series 2. Will we see a Bobby Witt Jr. image variation like we saw a Ronald Acuna Jr. bat down in 2018 Series 2? Well, we'll find out on Friday. Maybe we get a J-Rod one as well, or maybe we don't get any. But if you do see that those cards are available as image variations, you're going to see Top Series 2 get real popular real quick. So we'll have to wait till Friday, but we'll have plenty of image variations available. We also have the Diamond Greats die cuts, again, a continuation from Series 1, 25 additional cards in the set with the parallel breakdown that you see on screen. We also have Generation Now, 30 cards in that subset with a decent parallel rainbow. We have the Home Run Challenge code cards again, going to be 30 cards in that subset. If you guess the day that the player hits a home run, you win a numbered card. Then we have the No Hit Club, new for Top Series 2, 25 cards in the insert set with a parallel breakdown of blue, black, gold, red, and platinum. You can see what that looks like over there on the right with the Clayton Kershaw card. And we have the oversized 1987 All-Star Box Loaders. Those are only available in the jumbo format, 25 cards in the insert set with a small gold, red, and platinum parallel rainbow. Then we have the Ultra Rare Salute to the Mick. Three additional cards in Top Series 2. They had three in Top Series 1, so now we have six. Again, a very hard card to pull, but very awesome if you can get one. Significant Statistics Return. That's got 25 cards in the subset with the parallel breakdown that you see on screen. We have more inserts. We have the sketch cards. Now, they're... Artists are still to be determined on that or to be announced, not determined, but they're all going to be one of ones. Very cool cards if you can get those. Then we have the stars of MLB. Those are the ones that land one per retail pack, 30 cards in the set with a small parallel rainbow, and there's chrome versions of that. Again, only available in retail, parallels of red, black, and superfractor available in those as well. Then we have Sweet Shades, which is kind of a take on the Top Series 1 uh, Fantastic Feet where they had all the shoes. Now we're looking at the sunglasses, 20 cards in the insert set with the standard parallel rainbow that we see in most of the insert sets for Top Series 2. Now for the relics. We'll start with the 1987 Topps All-Star Baseball Relics. That has 40 cards in the set. And we have a parallel rainbow of black, gold, red, and platinum. There's the 1987 Topps Baseball Relics. Those carry on from Top Series 1 again. We've got 30 cards in the set with the same parallel breakdown that you see on screen. And then we also have the All-Star Alumni Commemorative Relics. Those are only available in Hobby and Jumbo Packs. You can see what it looks like over on the right with Pedro Martinez. A small parallel rainbow available in those as well. And... For the retail blaster boxes, what you're going to get, the guaranteed relic, will be the commemorative batting helmet relics. 50 cards in the relic set. We have additional relics. We have the in-the-name relics, which are only available in Hobby and Jumbo. 50 different cards in the subset, but they are all one of ones. Interestingly, though, because they take letters from the player's last name off of the jersey, put them onto a card, some players do have more than one card. 
the major league materials returns. This is the one that you're going to pull out of most of the boxes and packs that you're opening. 38 cards in the set. It's got a decent parallel rainbow of black, gold, red, and platinum one of one. You can see what that looks like on the right with the Juan Soto. And then we have the Silver Slugger Awards patches. This is going to be a manufactured relic available in Hobby and Jumbo. 25 cards in the set with a black, gold, red, and platinum rainbow as well. Now for our autographs. We have the 1987 Tops All-Star Baseball Autos. You can see what Mike Trout's card looks like on the right. 63 cards in the auto checklist with a black, gold, red, and platinum parallel rainbow. The reds and platinum are only available in Hobby and Jumbo. We also have the 1987 Tops Baseball Autos. 79 cards in that auto checklist. Same parallel breakdown as the All-Star ones. Then the Baseball Stars Autos, been a staple of the flagship set for a long time. 54 cards in the subset with a black, gold, red, and platinum parallel rainbow. There's also dual autos. 28 cards. They're each going to be numbered to five or less. That's where you're going to get two autos on one card. Then we also have the cut signatures. Very cool if you can pull these. Some amazing names on the checklist this year. 37 different cut signatures available. And of course, they are all one of ones. Continuing on with the autographs, we have the Diamond Greats die cut autos. Those are going to be numbered to 10 or less. And there are 10 cards in the set. You can see what Nolan Ryan's looks like on the right. The Generation Now has an auto variation. So those are going to have 25 cards in the set, each numbered to 10 or less as well. We have the No Hit Club Autos, 17 cards in the set, each numbered to 10 or less. And the Oversized 1987 All-Star Box Loader Autos. There's 15 cards in the set, and they are only available in Jumbo, obviously. And Significant Statistics has autos. Those have 16 cards in the set. And the Sweet Shades also has autos, 10 or less, 16 cards in the auto set. For our autographed relics, we have the All-Star Alumni Commemorative Relic Autos, 14 cards in the set, each numbered to 10 or less. And we have the Commemorative Batting Helmet Relics, 42 cards in the auto checklist, and they're each numbered to 10 or less, only available in blasters. We have the Major League Materials Autos, 41 cards in the set, each numbered to 50 or less, and there's a small parallel rainbow of red and platinum one of one. And the Silver Slugger Award Patch Autos, numbered to 10 or less, only available in Hobby and Jumbo, 21 cards in the set. And my favorite patch auto out of every patch auto that is made, the Topps Reverence Patch Autos, 57 cards in the set, each numbered to 10 or less, they're only available in Hobby and Jumbo, and you can get a parallel red and a platinum one of one. You can see what Derek Jeter's looks like. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous auto relic. And so if you pull one of those, they're pretty stinking awesome. So that's what Top Series 2 is offering. A lot of people are going to be offering this in breaks. So who should we be targeting in breaks? Well, like I said, I'm going to give you six teams. We will start out with who I think the best team is. Might be a little bit of a surprise here, but I am going with the New York Yankees. They have 10 base cards, one rookie card, 31 different inserts, 18 relics, and 37 different autos. Now, here's what we're chasing. Derek Jeter autos, Mariano Rivera, which apparently I don't know how to spell Rivera. Um, we got Anthony Rizzo, Aaron Judge autos. We have those salute to the Mick inserts. They have three different cut signatures that you can pull. The reason I'm picking the Yankees over some of the other teams, they have a ton of content and they're going for cheaper than some of the other teams in a pick your team break. But I do think that if you're getting into a case break, the Yankees are going to deliver. They have a fantastic auto checklist. A lot of teams have a good auto checklist in Series 2. I think the autos are kind of what's saving Series 2 here a little bit. Not a ton on the rookie front, but when you go into the autos, I just think that if you're looking for a return on your investment, the Yankees, you're not going to go wrong with the Yankees. I'm picking the Yankees. It's close for the best team. 
But if you're buying into a pick your team break, the Yankees are not the most expensive team. They're close, but I think the Yankees, you're probably getting a pretty good deal on them in top series too. If you're looking for the most autos, go look at the Angels. Now the Angels could also be considered the best team to get in series two as well. Here's what they have. 17 different base cards, seven rookie cards. Now, by the way, that is the most rookies that you can get in top series two in a team set checklist as well. They have 22 inserts, nine relics, and 43 different autos. The autos you're chasing, big ones. Mike Trout, Shohei Otani, Brandon Marsh, which would be a rookie auto, Reggie Jackson, Rod Carew, some Hall of Fame autos in there. They have a ton of content as well. The Angels, a very expensive team. They're right there at the top. If you get them in a random team break, hold them because Trout and Shohei have Plenty of different autos that you can pull out of this. Plus, you can get some of those rookie autos. You've got Reed Detmers in there, Brandon Marsh, some of the Hall of Fame autos. If you get them in a pick your team break, it's going to be expensive, but you've got better chances of autos with the Angels than you do with any other team, just based on the fact that they have so stinking many of them. If you're looking for the most rookie cards, well, that's the Angels. But if we take the Angels out of the equation, then you're looking at the Miami Marlins. I'll be honest, the Miami Marlins, I don't think they are a great team in this set. In fact, I think they're actually kind of a poor team, but they do have 12 base cards. And if you're chasing rookies and you want to chase them cheap, look at the Marlins. They've got five rookie cards, three inserts, two relics, seven autos. Not a lot of content available. You're looking for Brian De La Cruz, Edward Cabrera, Nick Fortes. Uh, Sandy Alcantara has some autos. He's not a rookie, but he's got an auto in the set. But really, you can get the Marlins cheap. And if you're chasing rookies, not a bad team to get on the cheap. So if you can get them at a dirt cheap price in a pick your team auction, something like that, maybe the Marlins are a team you want to look at. But outside of the rookie cards, there's just not a lot offered here for the Marlins. But they do have those five rookie cards. If you're really chasing rookies, maybe go look at the Angels instead. If you want a solid choice, the St. Louis Cardinals. The St. Louis Cardinals are the dark horse best team in this set. They have 11 base cards, one rookie card, 24 inserts, nine relics, and 30 autos. Now, what are the autos? Well, you've got the rookie, Juan Yepes. you got Stan Musial autos, Dylan Carlson autos. There's five different dual autos that you can pull out of the set. They have more cut signatures than any other team. They've got six different cut signatures. And they have a ton of Cardinals Hall of Famers available in the auto checklist. I actually think the Cardinals, which are an expensive team, people aren't sleeping on the Cardinals at all in this set. But if you want some monsters, the St. Louis Cardinals, I think, are offering the most monster pulls, especially on the cut signatures, those dual autos, the Hall of Fame autos, just a really nice auto checklist. You might be able to trade for the Cardinals for someone that hasn't really looked at the checklist that much in a random team break. And if you can trade for the Cardinals, I would make that trade. They're going to cost you a little bit and to pick your team but I do think that they're worth it. The Cardinals here are not going to be the most expensive team, but they do have some absolute monsters that you can pull. So if you're getting into case breaks, this is a team I would definitely, definitely look into. If you're looking for some sleepers, the Cincinnati Reds, a lot of people, it has not been a very good team to get in 2022. A lot of people have kind of slept on them a little bit, but they are offering quite a bit here in top series too. There's 11 base cards, three rookie cards, 15 inserts, 13 relics, and 32 autos. The names you're chasing, Barry Larkin, Johnny Bench, Joey Botto, Alejo Lopez, Jonathan India autos. So they've got a very nice auto checklist. They've got a lot of different content. They're kind of a middle of the road team in the pick your team break pricing. And if you're getting into a case break or a quarter break, a quarter case break or something like that, half case break, I think because they have so many autos, I think you've got a pretty decent chance here. And I think you can get them pretty cheap. Again, another team that you can probably trade for fairly easily in a random team break. So if you get a team that you don't like, hit up who's got the Reds and see if they're willing to make a trade with you. I might even trade some of the teams that are a little bit more sought after 
to try and get the Reds in a random team break. So if you've got kind of a middle tier team and we'll cover off on what I think the middle tier teams are, try and trade up for the Reds because they're one of the better teams in this set. And the pricing doesn't really reflect that, that I've seen so far on some of the auctions for pick your team. My next sleeper, the Baltimore Orioles. They've got 10 base cards, two rookie cards, 11 inserts, 12 relics, and 23 different autos. Now, the reason I'm saying the Baltimore Orioles, again, I'm going and kind of looking at all of the Hall of Fame autos that are available. We've got Brooks Robinson, Cal Ripken Jr., Jim Palmer. They've got two dual autos, two cut signatures. And again, this is a team you can get fairly cheap in a pick your team break. Now, there's not a lot of rookie stuff happening here. They do have a couple rookie autos, no big names. But if you're getting into those case breaks, again, it's all about can I get the autos? It's all about can I get the hit? I think with the Baltimore Orioles, with the price you're going to pay, you've got a decent chance at it returning on your investment. If you get them in a random team break, I think you're just fine. I would hold on to them, maybe even try and trade for them. A lot of people down on the Orioles. The Orioles are typically not a totally sought after team, so you might be able to trade for them, but don't sleep on them. They've got plenty of content in the set. There's some teams that have a little bit more, but I really think that with some of the names and the quality names that you can get in the auto checklist, you're not going to go wrong with the Orioles for what they're being priced out at right now. So those are the six teams that I recommend targeting in breaks, except for maybe the Miami Marlins. But like I said, they've got the most rookie cards. But where do all of the 30 teams place and what teams should you stay away from? What teams should you really be chasing? Well, I've got a break cheat sheet for you. And we break it down into three different categories. The top tier, which are teams that I would have no hesitation buying into as they have plenty of content, very solid teams. Then we go into the second tier, which is they're not bad teams at all, uh, but you might not hit on every break you get into. And then I have my bottom tier, which are teams that I would recommend to stay away from. We'll start with the top tier. We've got the Yankees, which I said were the best team, the the Angels. Again, the Cardinals, great. The Braves have a ton of content, as do the Red Sox. ton of different autos you can pull out of there. Um, I've got Kansas City in here because Bobby Witt Jr. is available as an auto. I've also got Seattle in here because J-Rod is available as an auto. I also think that there's an outside chance that we see some of these in an image variation, and that will make them even more popular. I've got San Diego in here. Fernando Tatis has a ton of different autos, and Fernando Tatis autos have been a little scarce in 2022, so I've got them, and then I've got the Reds because they've got a ton of content. For my second tier, we have a lot of teams in the second tier, and this is something where I think Top Series 2 is getting a little bit of flack where it doesn't really deserve it. Most of the teams in Top Series 2 have a lot of good content, and most of the teams, if you like those teams, have a fantastic auto checklist. So, take a look at the second tier teams. We've got the White Sox with a ton of content. Like I said, I've got the Orioles in here as a sleeper. We've got Juan Soto autos available with the Nationals. O'Neill Cruz with the Pirates. That's kind of a big rookie card in this set. Don't sleep on them. The Phillies have a ton of different autos. So any of these teams, like the Astros, again, if you like the Astros, if you're looking for some of those team autos, they have almost every one available. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. has a ton of autos for the Blue Jays. Any of these teams here, the Diamondbacks, probably one of the better teams that you're looking for in regards to rookies and rookie autos. The Diamondbacks have a couple good rookies in this set. So take a look there. But any of these teams right here, if you're a fan of these teams, don't hesitate to buy into them because they do have good stuff for the team if that's the team you like. There are only five teams that I would put in the bottom tier here. The Miami Marlins, again, they've got a lot of rookie cards, but not much else. The Rockies have virtually nothing to offer. The Rangers, not again, just not a lot to offer. Same with the Guardians, same with the Twins. These are the five teams that I would stay away from. So let me know who you're chasing when you get into breaks and who your teams are. I'd love to respond to the comments below. Let me know what you think about the break cheat sheet. Would love to know. But without further ado, it is time to get to the one cent sensational set ranking to find out how good or bad 2022 Top Series 2 really is. Here's what we do. It is the most in-depth rating system you're going to find anywhere on the, on the internet. 
I break the set down into 10 different categories and each category is worth one to 10 points. Then we add up all of those points and that what's, that's what gives us our final sensational set rating using the scale that you see below. Then what I do is I compare the 2022 set with the past set scores from 2021 and 2020 to see if the set is getting better, to see if it's getting worse. And then I compare it to all of the other sets that have been released so far this year to see how it stacks up against this year's sets that have been released so far. So here are the 10 categories. And it shouldn't say 2022 Bowman Baseball. It should say Top Series 2. But hey, I do copy paste. Okay, so we're going to start with the peel. This is a flagship set. A lot of people collect it. Set collectors collect it. Auto collectors collect it. Rookie card chasers collect it. About the only people that don't collect it are people that only chase prospect cards because they're not available in this set. This set historically has been a very popular set, and it's going to be very popular again this year. I give it a nine. The base set checklist is where it falls short this year. Again, I mentioned it earlier. There are a lot of rookies that people thought should be in here, and based upon how Topps historically has put rookies into sets, they're not in here, and it does feel like they have held some names out. Jeremy Pena, Bobby Witt, Torkelson, the list goes on. The base set checklist, because we're missing a lot of rookies, I cannot go higher than a three. It's a little disappointing, Again, I do think that if they put some of those short print image variations and make Bobby Witt a short print image variation, that could very much help the set. But the reality is, front to back on this set, it's kind of weak for the base set checklist. I give it a three. However, when we look at the auto checklist, the auto checklist for Series 2 is stinking phenomenal. There are huge names. If you are a fan of your team and you want autos of your team, Buy your team in a in a pick your team and try and get some of those autos because the auto checklists are great. The cut signatures are great. They have a lot of big names. There are virtually no names missing out of here. I think Ronald Acuna Jr. is the only big name that I found where he doesn't have an auto in the set. For our inserts, parallels, and variations, I'm going to go ahead and give it a 6.5. The inserts, not a lot of new stuff. The no hit club thing is okay, but again, they put a lot of inserts into the flagship set. It almost feels like an insert driven set sometimes, but not a lot of new stuff. We do get the 1987 design, so that's cool. We've got a decent parallel breakdown, but if it's like series one, they're going to be kind of long odds to pull some of them because of the pack odds and production and the variations are kind of cool. We'll see if we get a Bobby Witt or a J-Rod or some of those names in an image variation. We may, we may not. We'll just have to wait till Friday, but I go ahead and give it a 6.5 for the production run and the pack odds. This is going to be available everywhere. Production runs, again, I've said it multiple times this season. Production runs are way up, so I cannot go higher than a two. We're going to have some pretty long odds on these packs. For the card quality, standard tops flagship card, I go ahead and give it a five. For the historical value, a lot of cards in Top Series 2 have gone on to become very popular. Of course, a lot of the rookies that we've pulled in the past, they're flagship rookies. If you've got the parallels, they're worth a ton. This set can be worth a lot. Maybe not quite as much as Topps Chrome, but I'm going to go ahead and give it a 6. For the cost value, which is how much return are you getting on your investment when you buy a hobby box, a jumbo box, a blaster box, something like that. I'm going to go ahead and give it a 5. I do think that it's still a little expensive at 124 bucks on a hobby box to not have a guaranteed auto. And even if you do get an auto, there's a chance that maybe you get one of the ones that isn't as desirable. But you do get the rookie cards, you do get in blasters, and in some of these fat packs, a lot of those image variation cards, there is value to be had in 2022 Top Series 2, but not all of the boxes are going to return the value that you get when you buy the box. So I go ahead and give it a 5. For their artistic value, I like the 2022 Tops design. I liked it in Series 1. We get the same design here. Uh, there are some very cool, like the Sweet Shades insert, the very kind of neat design that you don't see all the time. And there's a lot of fun stuff with the relics that they do. You got great photography here. But I go ahead and give it a 6. 
And then for collectability, which is let's take value and how much stuff is worth out of it. How fun is this set to collect? Well, for set collectors, it is a must have set. It adds on to the Topps flagship set for 2022. Very collectible there. If we're chasing some of these rookies, collectible there. I think this year I'm going to knock it just a little bit because we're missing some of the key rookies out of here for the rookie chasers. This set is leaving a lot to be desired. So overall, I think it's still a very collectible set. I think it's a fun one. If you like baseball cards and the tops tradition and nostalgia, you kind of can't pass on this as a set collector set. And overall, I think it's still a fun set. And there's a lot of fun stuff that we're finding in Top Series 2. I give it a 7.5. So like I said, we're going to do all of the points, add them all up. And this year, 2022 Top Series 2 on the sensational set rating scale comes in at a 59. So it comes in at an average set. It is not a very good set. Again, a lot of this has to do with the fact that the rookies that everyone thought were going to be in here are not in here. But there's still hope. We have a great auto checklist. We have a flagship product here that is historically very popular. We have an outside chance that we could get something like a bat down Acuna type card for some of these bigger rookies. That may or may not happen. I wouldn't bank on it, but I do think that there's still a lot of fun stuff to chase in this set, but I also think that they have a big miss with the rookies. So it's an average set, a high average set. And in 2021, if you would like to see kind of the difference of where it ranked last year versus this year, it was a 69.5. So it has come down quite a bit. It was a very good set last year. And this year, it's just really hard as that base set checklist coupled with the production run being up. It's just really hard to call this a very good set. The odds of hitting something are going to be fairly long on this. And the fact that we don't have a ton of chase cards to begin with, you might find that this set is just not going to deliver the way it historically has in the past. In 2020 Top Series 2, which did have one big rookie card, that was Luis Robert. And I think we had uh, Randy Rosarena in there as well. That also had a 69.5. But 2022 Top Series 2 feels a little like 2020 Top Series 2, just without that big chase. So. Again, like I said, we've gone backwards a little bit here with Top Series 2. Top's maybe manipulating a little bit of when these rookies are going to show up in sets, but I think we might be pleasantly surprised by the auto checklist. I think there's stuff to be had here, and I do still think it's a very fun set, collectible for set collectors, collectible for the masses, and still an affordable set to buy into, and an important set because flagship Tops in all the changes that are going on with Tops with Fanatics, it is nice to see that we're still carrying through on flagship and carrying through that nostalgia. So where does 2022 Top Series 2 rank with all of the other sets this year? Well, it comes in at 8 out of 11. With the 59, like I said, it's an average set. Comes in just below Tops Heritage, which had O'Neill Cruz, kind of almost the same exact set at this point when we talk about some of the rookies. So the checklist kind of balance out there a little bit. Bowman Baseball still running away with it at the top with a sensational set score of 78. And then you can kind of see that Tops is still dominating the top 10. We, 9 and 10, we've got Don Russ and Panini Diamond Kings. Again, a lot of those scores, fun stuff to rip, but because of the logo issues and stuff like that, just it really kind of takes away from some of the appeal. And our top five kind of rounds out with a couple higher end, you know, Inception and Tribute. Top Series 1, still a very nice set, and Gypsy Queen, which right now is kind of my dark horse for best set of the year. Gypsy Queen is a very fun rip if you have not ripped any. So let me know if you think this is fair to Top Series 2, if you're staying away, if you're buying in, what you love about the set, what you hate about the set. Let me know in the comments below. I respond to plenty of the comments and love to have your comments in the discussion. On top of that, Throw over to first, hit that like button if you haven't done so for me already. It's a great way to support the channel. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you like these set reviews because I do them throughout the 2022 card season for most of the major releases. And finally, 
as I always say, as you're out there in the wild, I hope you have good luck finding Top Series 2 on the shelves. And when you do open those packs, I hope you rip some fire. And until next time, guys, be good to your family, be good to your friends, be good to your neighbors, and most importantly, take care of yourselves. Thanks for watching. We'll do it again soon.